Hello fashion sewers, I hope you are fine. If you're new to my channel, I'm Colleen G. Lee and this is the jacket that we will be refashioning or I will be refashioning and I'm going to make it into an halter neck top which basically means I'm going to remove the sleeves and I'm also going to remove a section of the back. I wouldn't say this is a beginner's project i'm hoping it's not going to be too challenging but i definitely think it'll be uh, a project that an intermediate and definitely an advanced um, fashion sewer can actually attempt so let's get into um refashion this jacket and let's see what it looks like at the end so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to try it on and then you can have a look to see how it looks on my body and see how much i need to be taken in i think it's going to be a project that isn't hopefully fingers crossed filled with too much difficulty um but it isn't a beginner project i give i'll say that much and yeah let's let's see, see what happens i'm kind of looking forward to see seeing how this will work um but before i do anything i just want to show you the fit and show you areas in which i am going to be taking it in so it fits closer to my body shape So you can see how loose the jacket is and it's several sizes too big. So the best thing for me to do to start with is to identify the areas which I can actually take this in to make it smaller. Now the it's got a princess seam within the jacket here so I'll definitely be taking some out of that. Not too much because I don't want to distort the jacket but I'll take out as much as I possibly can to get 2.5 centimeters or even more then that's brilliant but you do have to bear in mind that the seam does run into the pocket and there's nothing you can do about that because that's already cut and um, so I know I'll be taking out quite a bit from there I'm also going to be taking some out from the side seam you can take quite a bit out of the side seam as well so I'll put a pin there. So come in and there's, the princess seems also follows through the back, but it's got a nice top stitching there. So I'm not going to interfere with that, but the centre back seam is where I'm going to be taking out quite a bit. We have to get away with taking out quite a lot there. So I'll just clip that. It's going to be quite a lot, um, but we'll just see how it goes as I am um, there. So hopefully, yeah, there could be a bit of shape that goes on there. It does kick out quite a bit for a jacket and it is kind of slightly higher at the back than it is at the front and I don't think it's my costume that's doing that. So the first thing is going to be removing the sleeves and then decide how I'm going to do this also. So I'm going to have to cut into it like so on here on these lines like like a raglan shaping which just means it's just going to be slanted because the collar needs to be attached in order for the... And I it's taking a bit of the collar as well, actually. It's going to be quite a, a big project. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to... But let's see first. So this is the first fitting of me trying it on. Princess seam to the front, the side seam, and the back. So those are the three areas I'm going to concentrate on both sides. Um, but first of all, I'm going to remove the sleeves and then that is what I will tackle. Okay. So what do I need to do now? First thing I need to do is to remove the sleeves. And you're going to need a seam ripper for that. You always need a seam ripper when you are refashioning. So I'm going to start to remove the sleeve by inserting my seam ripper into the front. So I'm not going inside of the jacket. I don't need to for this, as long as I'm very careful with removing the sleeve with 
my seam ripper and I just continue that all the way around until I come to the end and it's removed and also the lining as well with both sleeves. On my channel, I'm here to inspire, motivate, and share ideas for refashioning clothing to change how we produce fashion. If you are into that sort of thing, consider subscribing and let's get back to the video. Remove the sleeve from the jacket. Now it's only for the sleeve lining that I need to remove. I mean, you can do, you can cut this away, but I'm going to keep it in because I'm not sure how much I'm going to be cutting away here and I don't want to leave myself short with any, you know, the lining being too small and it starts to um, distort the jacket, which it shouldn't do really because they should actually put enough room in the lining so that it doesn't cause that problem. But it is ready to wear so I'm not taking that chance. Um, so all I need to do is remove the lining and then it will be separate, they will be separated and I can just focus on the body of the jacket. The sleeves are going to be part of this jacket because I want to make sure I use as much as possible of um, any garment that I refashion. So that's what I'm going to do next. I've removed the sleeves, removed the shoulder pads very carefully and the next thing to do is just focus on the body of the jacket. So we're going to end up with a shape like this. In order for the alternate top to actually stay on my body, we're going to be cutting at this angle like this, so it's like a raglan shape angle on both sides to get a shape like that. But before any of that, I've got to do the fitting part. So this is when I need to go inside the garment. This can be a little bit daunting when you go in inside of a lined garment because it looks so scary but it's not okay so get to the front of the jacket and this is the princess seam so this is where I've got to take up quite a bit and hopefully not distort it too much this is the pocket it's a pocket bag so we're taping it into the seam here. Can't take it. I can't take it any further than the this point here because the pocket has an opening and the fabric's already been cut. So I'm going to be taking as much as I possibly can from the bust point area so I can get a good fit to my body. So that's where I, I'm going to base before I start stitching because you know that I'm into making sure you have luxury fitting garments and they fit well. So basting is always a, um, a good tip to start practicing when you are sewing because it will give you a better finish to a garment. So I'm going to base that and I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm also going to do the same for the back centre seam. Taking up quite a bit there. So I'm now working on the back. Um, I'm just going to share with you my thought process as I am deciding what my next step is going to be. Whether I should just cut straight across 
and then that allows me to give me the area in which I know I have to work with which will be the lower section because this will be cut away and that's how you create an alternate top um, and then it's also thinking about facing because I'm not going to have that much left from this and as you can see I've got a curved shape here but it is a refashion project so you're going to have some a little bit of unusual shaping which is great I think to give it a different look from a design perspective um, the sleeves um, I don't want to use at all as part of the facing because that is going to be part of the tie that I want to create so I'm not touching the sleeves, the sleeves, hopefully all the sleeves will get used. Um, so I'm just gonna think about, should I actually cut this now? But how much? Because I want to create a facing. That goes under like that. And I'll be taking some away from the side and some away from the centre. So if I'm going to cut, it'll be from my shoulder to this point here, straight across. Yeah, and then I can release the back of the collar. When you are refashioning, it really is about thinking on the job so to speak as you are refashioning and trying to think of the best way um, may not be the quickest way um, if you can do it the quickest way then that obviously will help um, but you also want to make sure you get the best fit because I have to get it to fit me before I do any other part so it starts to look like a refash so it starts to look like a um, alternate top so yeah, I'm going to cut across there, so that much is going to be taken away. And then I'm going to take away the seam on the shoulders. And let's just see what it looks like, let's just see what happens. That's, that's what I'm going to do. Right, so first of all I'm going to just get my seam ripper in there and then start releasing those stitches on both sides and then I fold it in half this section in half, well not in half, to this point here is where I'm going to cut right across. This is the stage I'm at now, so I've removed the shoulder seam I see that's the collar and that's the shoulder to the front so I'm now going to focus on the back so let's lie the back flat as possible I'm including a lining in this as well I'm going to cut the lining just line all that up so here secure the top this is a shoulder so I've now placed so I'm working on the right side I'm going to cut this and align that at the same time so let's I've got my sewing gauge here let's use the slider to indicate where I need to go on this side There. It's going to be a bit Yeah, I'm just going to tear that just a little bit away Because here's slightly higher Okay Making sure I've got it as flat as possible Just check the underneath, yeah that lining at the centre, at the 
centre back usually has a pleat in that little tuck and that's just the movement when you're wearing the jacket and I'll get my scissors and then make a cut just check these measurements again yep yeah I'm just gonna cut straight across you can draw a line with chalk if you want as well I'm just gonna eyeball this as they say yeah, I think that's pretty straight enough I'm happy with that There's only a little bit of waste possibly with this section so I pull that to one side this is what we're working with let's see what we're working with so I'm happy with this because this is going to be the facing as well so this is what you refer to as a grown-on facing um, which meant I could have actually cut this a little bit lower but I'm not going to do that now because it's a refashion project and I just don't know what to expect so that'll fall back like so and that just helps to create a bit of support and stability to the back. So I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to put a pin there for a the moment on the other side. It's more than likely that I'll base this into position because I want an amazing fit so let me just show you what it will look like so the back will be like that it's looking good already yeah that's fine that looks nice nice neat and professional that's what you want with the refashion project looks nice okay now what do I focus on next I'm happy with that I know I need to make the center back smaller but I want to get all my cutting out of the way so I'm going to shape the armhole yeah that's what I'll do I'll shape the armhole so let's put these two together Make sure you just keep your work as flat as possible and you're matching up all the points. Think of it like matching up your notches of your the person who likes to make garments from scratch. Because even though it's a refashion project, you still want it to look amazing. And you know, you want whatever sewing you do to be beautiful and neat right so I'm going to pin here make sure I get my weights put that over there because I want the body of it to move but those lines are pretty much check on the inside lying flat And then just put pins in position and the side seam okay one more on here the thing with refashioning don't be too tough on yourself if things are not kind of meet up exactly as you would want them to because it really is about how it's been cut in the first place which has nothing to do with you really so you just do your best that you can so you can get the results that you're looking for okay now i'm gonna take my ring off for this 
I will make sure that the inside is really lying flat. Yeah, that seems nice and smooth and flat. I'm going to put a little weight here. Okay. So this is the front armhole. Um, I'm going to continue that kind of curved shape across like so to here because that will go into the collar. Yeah. I'm going to mark it with pins to give you an idea. The direction in which I'm going in. Yeah. This is where I need to cut now. It's from here to here. Okay, let's cut. A bit easier to cut from that point this way but because when you are filming you really do have to think about how to stay in camera shot and also make sure that you do a neat cutting of your work or sewing it's it's, it's it can be really challenging Right, now we know it's too big, so the next thing we've got to focus on is making it smaller so it fits me, fits my body shape. So we know we're going to take in the princess seam and the side seam. So I'm going to do those first, or should I do the back first? No, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do the princess seam. The princess seam is a little bit more trickier. But um, we'll get that out of the way. So I'm going to pin. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to base and then I'm going to try it on. You don't have to base if you don't want to. If you prefer to just try it on with pins in. That's if you've got the same situation as me where it's too big. If it's not, then you don't have to do this part. I'm going to take it all the way to the top. Okay. Yep, that's fine. Do the same on the opposite side. Uh, where are we now? I'm going to take the pins out of the back. This is the Grin on face and take those pins out for a moment so I don't get any pin pricks any <laughs> that I'm not aware of. So, and then we have the side seam. Okay, so I really can't take that much. I'm going to take as much as possibly that I can possibly take out because we've got a pocket to think about here. That's fine, that's that's the new way of clothing if we are to refashion that there isn't going to be that much symmetry within garments and i personally think it's going to be amazing that we're seeing garments that will still fit nicely on the body but that symmetry may be lost to some extent not not too much it depends you know if you are making garments smaller and I'm going to take it all the way down there so I'm going to there's my seam ripper and show you I take it all the way down to the bottom and it's also going to be followed through to the lining as well 
So I'm going to baste all that, come back to you so you can see what it looks like before I sew anything. I've finished the basting. Hopefully you can see that yellow thread. Didn't want to use black because sometimes using black on white you can possibly see like a dye out. So um, yeah, that's the reason why I've gone for yellow. So hopefully you can see the yellow. So it's the princess seam, this side seam, and the back seam. And I've done the same on the opposite side as well. So what I now need to do is try it on and see where I'm up to and see what the fit is like. Okay, let's try this on. I just put some pins in the back, so, so I'm going to be careful. Okay, that's that's getting a lot better. Hopefully, the puckering that's happening happening here in the princess seam will disappear once I've sewn and pressed it. Well, that's a much better fit to the front. The colour and the art, yes, this is really good. Yeah, that's looking nice. Yes. It's not bad. It's a good fit. Oh, the back is not there. Okay. The waist and the hip area, fine, no problem. Oh, in the back. Yeah. May have to take a bit more. Hmm. I can't. I feel like I could take a bit more in the sides here. I think you can probably get a better fit, but you've got this problem here is whether I need to cut away more, which is something I really don't want to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's going to be a case of, I think you can leave the back seam alone and then just take more in the side seams and cut this extra away, which I didn't really want to do, but yeah, I think that's going to be the case. I'm going to pull it in at the sides here. That will solve the problem because we're talking about here. Let's take that in a bit more, then cut this excess away, which is, which is pretty low. But I may be able to lift up a bit and lift that up a bit and it means I have to take some out of the collar. I may have to take once to lift it up a bit. It's probably thick around my boob area a bit better so that may have to happen. Okay. So I definitely no need to take away the top section, um, which is okay. And I now need to use the sleeves. So I'm going to create a tie with the sleeves. Yes, because I've got to make sure I'll use as much of this garment as possible. And then we fashion, yeah. But I like this. This is really nice. Yeah, this that's fine. Okay. Focus on the side, cut away the back and focus on the side seam to make that smaller and then machine sew. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So this is the back and I'm going to have to cut this away. And so the back is going to be a, a bit lower than perhaps I would like. So this becomes, yeah, I'm going to have to cut that bit away. And I may hoist up a little bit. That means I may have to cut into the collar, but we'll, we'll have to see and take a little bit in the side seams. So yeah, this, put the pin here.
There. So that, this bit here is going to be cut away. Creating a new facing. Goes down the bottom and I'm taking some in at the sides. And then I should get a better fit. So that is what I will do next. But before I do that, I want to move on to the sleeves. Now, as some of you may know, I want to use as much as possible of a garment that I'm going to be refashioning. So this is going to be come some sort of tie. I'm just going to check it back in here. So it may go into, yeah, the side seams and tie something like this. It should be quite cute actually. I'm not going to do anything else to the sleeves. The sleeves are going to remain as it is and see how much of the sleeve I can get into the side seam which won't be a lot actually and let's just see what shapes are created I may gather it a bit yeah I think that will be the case oh. so That's a good idea, actually. Um, keep the sleeve as is. Don't do anything to the sleeve. Get the top part of the sleeve into the side seam. I may have to... Yeah, I'm going to sew the lining to the sleeve head round here. So it becomes nice and neat and then it can be tied together like that somehow see let's see how that looks see how that looks i'm going to actually put this into a side seam and see if it works see if i like it see if i'm happy with the way it looks because at the moment I, I'm liking the idea it's just whether it's going to be aesthetically pleasing when you actually see it done so yeah that's what I'm going to do so I then need to want to have the sleeve lining attached to the sleeve so it's nice and neat and gives it a finish neat finish look like so it has a sleeve roll in here and I was think I'm going to keep this in actually. I was going to take it out. I'm going to keep it in um, for two reasons really. The first one is because I'm a person who likes to experiment when it comes to my clothing and if I'm not sure about something, whether it will work or not, then I'll go ahead and still make it up and it still looks professional and I'm the only one that more or less knows that maybe this shouldn't be the case. Um, but I won't know that unless I actually sew it and you know test it on myself and it may ah the second reason maybe it may have a little bit more dimension to the the aesthetic of the garment so yeah this and and also thirdly you know want to use every bit of the garment so that's the other reason the third reason so we need to so in order to attach the lining to the sleeve like I've just demonstrated a moment ago is to put an opening into the sleeve if there isn't already one not in this one anyway let's just create an opening so there goes the opening and that opening is going to allow me to pull the sleeve to the right side. So make sure whenever you do the opening, it's in the lining, not the sleeve. So then I'll be able to 
get the sleeve like so and then you go into put the right side of the lining to the right side of the sleeve like so and then you're going to sew all the way around it's going to look a bit awkward um it should sew fine that should be okay you can put pins in i'll put a pin here just match up the seams and the top of the sleeve there's a nip you'll find little notches within the sleeve and the jacket fabric itself and just match those up and any other notches that you find just match those up with the lining so I've got three pins in there yeah, that's okay for me to go along to my sewing machine so what i'll then do is place it under a sewing machine like this way and then just keep sewing until i come all the way around to the point in which i started so i'm going to hold the pieces together like so i'm going to make sure i i stitch into the original stitch line as much as I possibly can. You tend to be working with smaller seam allowance because they're frayed and it's just part of the process of refashioning. My needle down and then just start sewing. Just keep turning your work slowly as you go. Remember to take your pins out. Just go a bit slower for you. Kind of like stitching in in the groove, stitching in the bitch, I should say, because you're trying to find the original stitch line in which to sew into. We'll just keep going until you go all the way around. So that is now complete. Now all I need to do is find the opening so I can bring it to the right side. Like magic. <laughs> there we go. Give it a bit of a shake. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. So that's the lining side. Then bring it to the right side. Now all I need to do then is just to press it all nicely into place. And if you wanted to, it'd be your choice. You could top stitch it if you would not, if you want to. But I'm just going to press mine. I'm looking forward to this. See how it works. Yeah, okay, and do the same with the other sleeve. Okay, they're now both ready to be put onto the jacket. So I'm really happy with that. But before I do put it on the jacket, I need to just press first. The lining and the sleeve is nicely sewn in and pressed. And that is ready to go. They are both ready to go. They're complete. Now, early in the video, I said I was going to put the sleeves into the seam, the side seam. 
But I've changed my mind, and this is what you can do when you're actually refreshing clothing, is that I think it looks gorgeous like that. You see this curved edge here? That has just settles towards the back, you know, under the underarm, towards the back of the garment. I think it's going to be gorgeous, rather than me just trapping it in to the seam like that. I mean, that's still nice. But I'm going to, yes, hand sew that into position there and then and that should look nice I can tie it so that's what I'm going to do before I seal the back I'm going to hand sew that into position I'm going to do that for both as well so the sleeves are really complete now until I've um, sewn the seams and the princess seam as well and also the back as well so I've cut that away and I put a little bit of interfacing in there to just stabilize it just a little bit because it is quite lightweight fabric I have to cut away a bit more of the lining and that's it really once I've done that it's a case of just getting the lining attached to the back and oh yes I've got to finish this part of the sleeve haven't I which more than likely will be yeah I'll be turning it that way and yeah hand stitching because hand stitching will stabilize it a little bit more and I'll put a little bit more interfacing here to give it a little bit more strength and stability and that should come nicely together I also said that I might have to cut into the net because it's it's sitting quite low on my body but um, I'm, that can be the very last decision that I actually do make um, because it's just this section I'll need to focus on um, so yeah I think the next thing I need to do is just sew the seams, press the seams and then work on the back, close the back and also close the front shaping okay it's getting towards the end of the day now and it's getting a bit dark so this project is going to be continued tomorrow and obviously I'm going to show you all the steps I'm going to go through in order to complete this project but I just wanted to come in and just say that when we are refashioning clothing it's so important that we use as much uh, of the garment as we can and within that project but don't kind of use it as a a must because I would like you to think that if I wasn't going to use the sleeves in this project then I'll definitely have saved it for another project and then you would have seen that evidenced throughout all the videos when I come to refashioning so even though there is kind of a bit of pressure to make sure that there's a little waste when we come to refashioning if you're going to use whatever is not going to be part of this project just put it to another project and you'll always see that when I'm doing my videoing and refashioning of my um, garments so I'm quite excited about this one I'm not sure if the sleeve idea is going to work but that's what my videos are all about so if you are beginning and haven't seen any other of my refashioning videos it really is a design process as you work your way through kind of changing your mind as you refashion the garment, try it on to see if it works, um, try it on to see if it's fitting in the right area. You may start off the video by saying, you know, you're going to do this and this and then that doesn't happen. That's fine, that is okay, because it's all about seeing how things work as you work through each one of the processes and that's what's so amazing about refashioning. Me personally, I have really got on board with refashioning and I'm a person who likes to work um, from scratch I've done that for many decades and yeah I found it really really liberating to, to think that I'm saving garments from going into landfill um, I'm saving garments that there's nothing wrong with them and going to the charity shops find these amazing pieces and most of them that I do buy have never been worn, worn before they've still got the swim tickets on and if you don't have the swim tickets on there's little tips and tricks that I use in order to make sure that it's not a well-worn garment and the choice is amazing it really is amazing the amount of things that we are throwing away when it comes to fashion so yeah 
So I'll come back to this tomorrow and I'll show them now. <laughs> and let's see what happens when I put these sleeves on. It should be good. Okay, I am back. And I've done quite a bit of work, but there's still a lot to go. Mainly a lot of hand sewing. Um, so I'm gonna be in the camera down in a moment so that I can actually show you what I've done so far. I'm actually enjoying this project. It's, um, I have made sure that I have used as much of this jacket as I possibly can in this project. To the point where I've even created this little tube thing, which you're gonna see in a moment why 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 I did it is because I want to try and use every bit of my um, garment and I think it just helps with the design as well um, which I'll share with you in a moment but yes I really almost used everything um, of this jacket so what I'll show you first is what I've got left over from the jacket and then I'll show you what the stage the stage the jacket is at now and then what the next steps are for me to complete it so this is what's left over so this is what's left over i'm so proud of myself so these are the scraps these are definitely going to be used in a project that's coming soon um shoulder pads i'm also going to save this as well and um, this is a back facing never know when that might come in handy and yeah this is what's left over the scraps there was a bigger scrap which was, if you remember early on in the video, where I cut out a back section, the top part um, where the shoulders connect. This is what, this is the result of what was left over from those scraps. And this is, this is very minimal. So yeah, I think I've done my bit for, um, <laughs> hopefully, um, for, you know, fashion and thinking about how we need to refashion clothes and not have so much waste. So moving on to the jacket. So now it's the top, a jacket top, an alternate. Well, I'm struggling here. <laughs> this is an alternate jacket top. That's what I'm calling it. That's it. So these are the sleeves. Whoa, amazing. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> This is what's going to be tying at the front and it looks super cute and yes this is what I've done so far. So what's left for me to do is that I've actually sewn these in position and I've actually hand sewn these. Uh, I used uh, uh, a hand stitching, back stitching in order to secure those into place on both sides. I've also had a, a snap here an invisible snap but that's what they call it but I know you can see it <laughs> just so that it's it, it's staying closed because it's gaping a little bit so that's what I did with that the collar still needs to be sewn that's going to be hand sewn I've sewn one side it's, I use a slip stitch for this I'm going to do the same on this side as you can see it's not done yet so I'm going to do the same as there and all I need to do then is place the lining on top like this and this is going to be hand sewn as well. It's possible to machine sew this, it will be a case of just going into the jacket and and having an opening somewhere so you can pull it through but um, yeah I'm going to hand sew that. Let me just show you the inside, oh before I do that let me just show you the bust area. As you can see, there's lots, there was lots of puckering here on that side. There's no more puckering. And that is just a case of just pressing so nice and smooth that curve is now. And this will be the case as well. Once, once I press that, it will look like that. So that's good. It's inside, so I was going to show you the inside. So I've given myself bigger seams, which is fine, it's okay. As you can see, the original seam is quite narrow and starting to fray. So I've just given myself some bigger seams and I've pressed those. 
and there so those th those are the areas in which I actually t take an inner jacket so it fits my body shape and anything else I've had a little um, hanging straps because um, when you hang it it will be if I didn't do that it would just be the collar taking the weight so I don't particularly like these in garments as well because it can be so annoying depending on what garment they're in um, but yeah that's it that's it so what I'm going to do now is a lot of hand sewing next step is going to be sewing this into place into place and then the collar and then sewing the lining to the back and the alternate jacket top is now complete it's done and it looks gorgeous it's so gorgeous this the sleeves so what I'm going to do now so let me just quickly just recap so I took the sleeves off and I made the sleeves into like a tie belt at the front but I wanted the sleeves to to look as though they are sleeves you know when you're at your jacket or cardigan around your waist that's the illusion I want to create with this um, to the front so the front also had I put a invisible snap on there and yeah so that's what happened to the front now the inside it's just a case of making it smaller so it fits me so I had to make the jacket smaller the lining smaller I put a couple of hanging tapes inside there because um, the only way that the jacket has jacket top has support is by the neck so hopefully that will keep that in place and keep its shape um, oh let me just re remove the basing thread that's in there and that's all so what I'm going to do now is I am going to try it on so that you can have a look at the fit and also you'll be able to see how I'm going to use this here it is Ooh. you've got to admit it's so gorgeous oh, it is cute yeah it's a success let me show you the back the little thing that I showed you that was from the back section here so that holds it into place and it looks good great fit and it was successful refashioning the only thing is uh, it, it is quite low for me I would rather it was about here um, but that's fine, that's the, that's the thing with refashioning, you know, you just have to work with what you've got. So I've now transformed a jacket into this halter neck jacket top, I'll call it, and I'm really pleased with the results. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please do share. Now, if you do actually go ahead and refashion a jacket, then please do tag me. I'm just here to inspire and motivate you and tell you that it is possible to transform a garment into another garment and it becomes just as wearable. This will be in my wardrobe for a very long time. And I think that's what refashioning should be all about. The message should be that we shouldn't be throwing things away that have still got life in them. It's, it's crazy. I've shown you that it's possible to transform something that's bigger than yourself and make it smaller and make it look different. You would have no idea that this was a jacket before it became this top unless I told people about it. So um, yeah, what can I say? I am I, I'm really chuffed with this. It really has worked out. Just can't wait for my next projects now and see how they go. So, you know, do really give it some thought about refashioning no clothing because I know I'm on that journey and I've been on that journey for a very long time to, to come because it's something we need to do. 
for sure it really is something we need to do so i'll see you in my next video and thank you for watching